Hey everyone, welcome once again to our daily morning worship and prayer. Let's start this morning by worshiping our God. You 
Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for you are here. Thank you that your power is here. We ask that you'd speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to read in Mark chapter 5. We're starting in verse 25 up to verse 34. So verse 25. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned around, turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But a woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This is God's word. Lord, please anoint the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this, uh, this story is really a story of two very different people. Hindi natin nabasa yung isa, but that's two different people, both came to Jesus in their time of need. One was Jairus. Jairus was a synagogue ruler, uh, elected leader, responsible to supervise worship, care for the building, and run the weekly school. And then there is this woman. So if you look at Jairus, Jairus was known and respected in the community. The woman was not even named. She was nationally unknown and internationally ignored. Nobody knew the woman. Jairus was wealthy. And if you look at the woman, the Bible, she was suffering for 12 years, including financially. So she had no money. Jairus' only daughter was dying. It was not him who was suffering. But it was a loved one, but the woman was the one personally suffering. So there are three action steps that, that I want to uh, talk to you about this morning in relation to miracles. Okay? Number one, if you are here, you're believing God for a miracle and a breakthrough. One of the first things that we need to deal with is to deal with negative thoughts. In verse 48, it says, for she said, uh, other translations would say, for she said to herself. Yung iba pong translation would say, for she thought, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Because she thought. The woman's breakthrough started on her mind. Kasi naisip niya. Naisip niya, if I touch Jesus, if I only do this, I will get my breakthrough. I will get my miracle. And so if you're here joining us in worship, and if you want to have any kind of breakthrough, if you're believing God for a miracle, the first thing you need to win is the battle in your mind. And how many of you know this is a tough battle? Why? Because we live in a very negative world. Kitsan ka tumingin yung news natin for the negative Mag-social media ka, puro negative. May kausapin ka, kumusta ka eto, pasama ng pasama. Wow! 
Pag kami tumatawid na bata, puro negative. Ay, naku, baka masagasaan ka. Negative agad. Baka hindi. Ay, naku, baka makatawid ka. Pwede namang positive. Pero negative karamihan. And that has, even for Christians and pastors like me, sometimes that takes a root in my mind. And that's why I can't believe God for miracles. You see, the woman had to believe. If Jesus could do it for Jairus, if the, Jesus could do it for a wealthy and known person in my community, God can do it for me. If He can do it, even if the doctors say they cannot, I believe Jesus can because everything is possible in Jesus. So I would like to encourage you to get this Bible, put God's Word in your mind, And every time there is a negative thought of unbelief, a negative thought of doubt and fear telling you it can't be, it is impossible, telling you God will not get this Bible and put it in your mind and start thinking right. Start thinking God's Word. Start thinking positive thoughts. That's your first battle that you have to win. Second, in verse 30, we have to dare to step out in faith. The Bible says Jesus perceived that power had gone out of him. And he looked, who touched my garments? That's, that's a question. You know, faith, somebody said this once. I was a new Christian. Somebody said faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Faith enables us to take a step and risk. I mean, tingnan niyo tong babaeng to. One of the biggest issues of this girl is a fear of rejection. Because she's been bleeding. She, uh, she's been isolated. She can't touch any person or else they'll become unclean. She's been rejected by society. And yet she went to the crowd. Not only did she go to the crowd, she dared she had the boldness, the audacity to touch a spiritual leader, although she knew she was unclean. She probably would also have a fear of another unmet, unmet expectation because 12 years na an answered prayer. She probably would have a fear of uh, suffering consequence because she would be technically breaking the law. But what did he do? She took a step of faith. She took a risk. The Bible says in Luke 8, the crowds almost crushed Jesus. So ganon kadami yung crowd. And yet, when Jesus was touched by the woman, he said, what? is that you? Is that you, Bong? Is that you, Gilbert? Is that you, Mary? Why? Because God is not just moved by need. He is moved by faith. Napakaraming need sa buong mundo. Pero hindi lahat ng need na move si Lord. But faith moves Jesus. Third lesson from this miracle is in verse 34. We have to decide to follow Jesus. He said in verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. And then Jesus said, Go in peace and be healed of your disease. You see, the woman got what she wanted. She could have gotten the healing, slipped in the crowd, and fled. But she stayed on. And when Jesus asked, who is that? She said, ah, guilty, it's me. She introduced herself to Jesus. She wanted to meet Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, go. You see, the, the word go literally means to go under. When you leave, to go under someone's authority which conveys a change of relation. You know what Jesus was trying to say there? You came here knowing I'm your healer. But because of this miracle, I want you to come away knowing I am your Lord. That you would go away making a decision to be under my authority. Making a decision to change our relationship from healer to personal Lord and Savior. You see, that's what miracles do. 
if you're believing God for a miracle, miracles point people to Jesus so that we can do what the woman did. Make a decision to follow Jesus, not just for today, but for the rest of our lives. Let's end this morning worship and prayer by going back and singing a song of worship to God. The same hands that hold the sea Still my soul and quiet me The same hands that hold the sea Still my soul and quiet me You Thank you, Lord. Okay, let me bless you with the blessing of the Lord to the Israelite in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless all. Have a great day.